First of all, Michelle, I want to start with you. Um, distracted driving has has obviously become a major issue, not only in Arkansas and Oklahoma, but across the country. Families Against Distracted Driving. Um, as the CEO, tell us what that organization, how it got started, and, and what your primary objective is. Well, FAD was started because someone I love and know is a victim of distracted driving. That's my nephew, Grant. In 2013, he was a passenger in a vehicle and his friend was texting and driving, lost control and flipped and rolled numerous times. Grant was partially ejected. That was the first mistake he made. He didn't have a seatbelt on. But the second mistake he made was he didn't ask his friend to stop texting. And so um, as a result of the accident, Grant is a quadriplegic. And when we started going through the process of seeing what the consequence of the um, driver's actions would be, it um, ended up that the driver received $330 worth of fines and 120 hours of con community service. And it was at that point that I decided that I was going to launch FAD, which my mom came up with when Grant was still in ICU and we didn't know if he was going to make it. And so we launched FAD in 2014, Families Against Distracted Driving, because distracted driving is not a FAD. It's here to stay and at all time high due to cell phone use. And then in um, 2016, we applied for our nonprofit status. And then um, starting in 2015, I've worked with legislators to strengthen the distracted driving law and um, to make it have serious consequences, just like drinking and driving, because studies have shown you are just as impaired, if not more than impaired, as someone who's legally drunk when you're using your cell phone behind the wheel. So we have driving under the influence of drugs and alcohol, but we also have now driving under the influence of technology. Lily, I want to talk to you just a second. Um, as as Miss Saline County teen, part of what you do now is junior ambassador to FAD. Why did why did you get involved in this? Okay, so when I was five years old, thirteen days before my sixth birthday, my mom was in a car with her friends, and the driver was drunk, and they got into a car accident, and she passed away. And um, as I started the Miss Arkansas organization, my interview coach contacted. Miss Michelle, because she helps with the Miss Arkansas program, and she contacted her, and I got in touch with her, and then I became the junior ambassador. What are your goals now as junior ambassador? What do you want to see done? Okay, so Arkansas is rated in the top 10 states for distracted driving, and I want to help with that and make Arkansas go down to the very bottom of the list, and I also want to get more junior ambassadors across the state of Arkansas. Joey, I know you've been involved with this for quite a while. You and I have done these segments in the past with uh, with your effort in getting into elementary schools. Um, tell us, I, I know you're working on that project right now. Talk about that for a second. Yeah, we're in the process right now of, of setting up um, uh, classes of sixth graders across uh, Fort Smith so that uh, we can uh, teach them about what distracted driving is. And, and uh, we've really formed a great partnership with Families Against Distracted Driving uh, over, the, over the years. And, and Michelle has, has come to Fort Smith. And so after we talk to them about what distracted driving looks like, we ask them to, to uh, enter a poster contest where they draw posters. And in fact, you can uh, see some behind me um, and uh, that's some of the, the artwork. Uh, we reward students. We thought sixth grade, you might ask why sixth grade, we, th we thought the youngsters, um, because they're in the back seats when their parents are sometimes distracted. And, and so uh, they're the ones who say, hey, mom, we learned this in class, and maybe you shouldn't be combing your hair. Maybe you shouldn't be putting on your makeup. Maybe you shouldn't be on that cell phone. Uh, so uh, it's been it's been really rewarding because of stories just like we just heard from Michelle and, and Lily, really touching stories of folks who are affected by dis distracted driving. And, you know, we have amazing just a 416,000 folks a year are injured by distracted driving. And we lose over 3000 lives a year in the United States from distracted driving. So uh we're really excited to get get our our program kicked off this year 
and uh, teach youngsters some lessons and have them the opportunity to to win prizes and and uh, uh, teach teach us as adults valuable lessons. You know, it's interesting, Michelle, Joey brings up a point that when you think of distracted driving, you think of, of texting or being on a phone, but it there's more to it than that. That's that's my story is texting and driving and Lily's story is drunk driving, but there are so many things that we do behind the wheel that distract us, putting on makeup. Um, just my number one distraction is mental distraction. I can get in the car and I can be ticking off everything that I'm going to do today. Our kids, our passenger, um, maybe it's music, maybe you know, I see people driving around with headphones on or watching a movie, um, playing solitaire on their iPad or reading a book. So it's anything that we do that takes our primary focus away from driving. Um, we talk about auto accidents, but an accident is something that you can't prevent. A crash is something that you can. And these are preventable crashes if people will just take the time to do their part and be responsible behind the wheel. There's five pieces of the distractive driving puzzle and one is legislation. And like I said, I've been working with the legislators since 2015 to strengthen the distractive driving laws. Um, law enforcement, our judicial system, education, which, would, which is what we're trying to do by starting young because you're never too young to start um, learning how to be responsible behind the wheel. And then everyone, the, the fifth piece of the puzzle is everyone, you, me, other drivers. We want to do everything that we possibly can to save a life and to save a family from having to go through um, becoming a victim of distracted driving. It's life changing and life altering, not just for the person who's involved in the accident, but the whole entire family. And if we can save one person, one family from having to go through what we went through, then that's that's our whole entire mission right there. Lily, do, you know, when you talk to, when you go around the area and you, and you, I'm assuming you're talking to uh, kids of your age, um, are they paying attention to what you say? Maybe when I'm talking straight to their face, but after I'm done talking to them, I do not feel like they are paying attention because I'm only one person and I can only talk to so many people. And I believe that if it doesn't start in their home, then they're not going to learn their lesson unless it actually happens to them. Joey, it's 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 encouraging to see Lily, you know, and, and other kids that when you go to these schools and talk, it's encouraging to see that these kids are starting to maybe get it. I think so. And and I think it's 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 really what Michelle said is so important. These are preventable. And uh, if we can do just the small things, uh, stay off our cell phones, not put our makeup on uh, and pay attention to what we're doing, because the mental element is sometimes uh, we may have our hands on the wheel and our eyes in front of us, but we're distracted mentally. We're thinking about what we're going to do uh, on the six o'clock news. We're thinking about <laughs> what that case that I need to be preparing. Uh, we're thinking about where the next event's going to be. Uh, so it's it's just it it takes awareness and that's what we're trying to create is is awareness and i think the city of fort smith is really doing a good job uh they have started a program and michelle and i have reached out to the city uh we want to involve the police in this and we want to see how we can help local law enforcement and uh again not only do it here in fort smith but um you know i've joined michelle in other places and we want to we want to we want to continue to make our presence felt across the state. And don't forget, as Michelle said, we've got a legislative session coming up. And, and we are working with um, Representative Ashley Hudson in Little Rock. And hopefully this year, fingers crossed, Arkansas will join all the other states that are hands free. Because that takes um, the question out of if you're actually dialing a phone or texting, that takes that totally off the um, take that that question is not um, a problem anymore because if you have your phone in your hand, you're breaking the law. So mm -hmm. everything would have to be hands free 
So that would be a huge help and assistance to law enforcement to get that hands-free legislation passed. Lily, you, you brought up a minute ago that you're, you're just one person. What, what needs to be done, do you think, to get more kids of your age involved in things like this? Well, I believe that right now we are doing the right thing to go to classrooms and set up meetings and host events to help people and to make them understand that it's not safe to be distracted while you're driving. So I believe that we just need to keep doing what we're doing and talk to way more people and go to other states and not just Arkansas and talk to way more people about the dangers of distracted driving. Yeah, that's to me, y'all, that's the most encouraging part about this is is getting somebody who grew up on a cell phone to talk about not being on a cell phone in the car. Well, people think all the time, it's not going to happen to me. And ironically, I worked in the insurance industry for 12 and a half years. I was a claims adjuster for two major insurance companies and I handled claims all the time. Of course, cell phones were just coming into existence then um, and not used as widely uh, behind the wheel. But at the same time, it can happen to anyone, anytime, any place. And and if you believe that, then you're not um, accepting reality because lives are changed in seconds behind the wheels of wheel of a car. And in my nephew's case, um, goals and dreams were shattered, and he's now um, in a wheelchair for life. And that totally um, brings, like I said, it brings so many different. Um, things into the picture, family dynamics, you know, get involved in medical bills and continue care. So it's very life altering, very life altering. All right. Well, Lily, Joey and Michelle, thank you so much. A great conversation. And, and obviously it does not end here. Could I no. add one more thing there? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, you know, the, we used to be, and we still are very concerned about drunk driving but just think how astro by the multiples of folks who have cell phones now. It's like a it's like having an open can of beer in every car, and uh, so th that's why the work that Michelle and and Lily are are doing is just so encouraging. And and the bottom line, they're, they're saving lives, and and uh, I thank them for that. And thank you for having this interview.